the newest Netflix Harlan Coben mystery series has arrived. This time it's the Polish adaptation called Hold Tight. Now it's got a lot of signature Coben features, but is it worth the time? When a young man goes missing soon after his friend dies, life in a tight-knit, affluent Warsaw suburb slowly unravels, exposing secrets and lies. Alright, so if you've seen any of the other Harlan Coben adaptations on Netflix, you know that his stories typically feature a smaller cast that is pretty much connected to each other in small ways. In Hold Tight, we've got Adam, a young man who goes missing shortly after his best friend Igor dies. Now, as Adam's parents frantically search for where he's gone, the police are occupied with a series of other disappearances. This is six episodes, with each of them being between 40 and 50 minutes long. Now, the pace is pretty consistent, but there are portions to the story that I think end up being more of a distraction to the overall plot. The show captures a lot of urgency with Adam's parents, as they are consistently met with obstacles and complications, most of which come about because even though Adam may be missing, he's 18. So the police see him as not a missing child, but an adult who just figured he wasn't going to check in with his parents. The story does a good job of placing characters within Adam's disappearance storyline. Now he's got a girlfriend, her best friend, along with two of his friends, and then from there we have Adam's parents, as well as his girlfriend's family, and the mom of Igor, Adam's best friend who died. As this main plot is going on, we also have a few additional storylines that follow some disappearances, also a blackmailing, and a student who's being bullied. And these are interesting on their own, and they have some thematic interconnectedness that works, but they also serve as a larger distraction to the main storyline. There are ties to that main storyline, so they're not completely disassociated, but once the finale arrived, it felt like we had two different short stories going on that were then intertwined to make the series last six episodes. Now, even though I felt that way with these, I was still invested in the show. I mean, I was drawn into the characters, especially Adam's mom and his dad, as they struggle to understand what happened to their son. I also like that the possibility of him just blowing them off is a reality that is present within the narrative. It's acknowledging that he's an adult who may just be tired of his family. But the frantic search they undertake is emotional and palpable at times, which then creates an urgency to find him. And sure, it is a false feeling of urgency, because we don't actually know if anything bad has happened. And it's not like there's some ticking clock that if he's not found within a certain time frame, that his head is going to fall off or something. I mean, but still, you know, a parent looking for their kid can be intense, and it comes across well within the story. Now, something that's funny, or maybe more curious, is that because we barely meet Adam before he disappears from the story, it's hard to have a connection with him to feel any concern that he could be missing. I think that the story wants us to be invested in his outcome, but it's difficult to do that. What I think we are able to become invested in, though, is Adam's parents. As they are such a large driving force within the search, we also get to see all sorts of emotions from them. Now, the story also begins to roll out pieces of information that involves their connections and their pasts, giving us a much better picture of who they are as parents, as well as insight into their overall relationship with Adam. The mom is certainly concerned, but she's also overprotective. I mean, are her actions what led to his disappearance? Now, I enjoyed the doubt that is placed on different characters throughout the show, and as more pieces are uncovered, we get to learn about how characters or events are connected, which then sheds light on small areas of the character, and that then provides intrigue and some doubt. Throughout this mystery, though, I never really felt much misdirection. Pretty much everything just comes straight at us. The doubt and the mystery come just because we haven't been shown certain facts or relationships. And once we do, more of the puzzle falls into place. There was never really an aha moment for me during this. I mean, where the mystery was just so complex or engaging that I was patting myself on the back for having figured it all out. I had fun with the show for what it was, but at the end of it, I wasn't blown away by the cleverness that I had hoped for. Now, I love the settings in this. We've got these run-down industrial-looking areas that are covered in graffiti and trash, giving it a slightly ominous feeling. But then we'll see all these well-dressed people milling about, creating a really good contrast. I mean, it's like garbage chic, mixing the well-to-do with the riffraff. Now, this has nothing to do with the plot or the story, but the house that Adam lives in is an awesome design. It's this massive duplex, but the house is built into sort of a levee type of hill. So the front of the house faces the street, but then there's this natural hill wall that creates a fence to provide privacy for the backyard, that then it slopes down into this body of water. I mean, it's a gorgeous building, and I know that that's neither here nor there, but I wanted to share it. So overall, Hold Tight is a good family drama that infuses some decent mystery, but it also gets overshadowed at times by a parallel story. The acting of our two leads helps to build some anxiety, and we can feel the urgency that they feel, even if there isn't any pressure other than them missing their kid. The story plays out fairly methodically without much misdirection, but I still found myself engaged with it all. And some of that, I think, is because I wanted there to be more complexity, so I kept watching and hoping. But even when there wasn't, I don't feel like I wasted any of my time watching. This is just one that I'm not going to revisit. 
I think if you're looking for an entertaining show that provides some attention and intrigue, this can provide about six hours of casual fun. There's sex, nudity, a lot of profanity, and some violence. I give Hold Tight three out of five couches. So what is your favorite Harlan Coben Netflix adaptation? Or if you don't have one, what's one of his stories that you hope will be made into a series? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this review, please give it a like. Also, don't forget to share and subscribe. I'm Chris. This is Movies and Munchies. Thanks for couching with me.